What's up, everybody? And welcome to another JavaScript Nuggets video where we cover nifty JavaScript topics that will come in handy when working on various JavaScript apps. And today we're going to cover the structuring, more specifically, array the structuring and how we can put it to good use when we need to quickly swap variables. So what is the structuring? And I would want you to think of the structuring as a faster or easier way to access or unpack variables from arrays or objects or when we're passing in objects in the function parameters, which we will cover in the later videos, because in this video, we'll just talk about the arrays. So imagine the scenario, we have two arrays, we have fruits array and friends array. And of course, in the fruits array, we have fruits. And then in the friends, we have friends. Now we already know that if I would want to access, for example, the first item in the array, I would go with some kind of variable. So in my case, that is fruit number one. And then I'm looking for the array name. And then since arrays are zero index based, we go with zero and then one and then two. And unsurprisingly, in a console, if I also lock fruit one, two, and three, I'm going to get orange, banana, and lemon. But this is somewhat cumbersome, correct? Because we have to create a variable, then we need to look for a specific one and all that annoying stuff. So why don't we try out the structuring? And the functionality for the structuring would be following where we go with const or let. Just keep in mind that if you go with const, of course, you cannot override these values. So if you would ever want to override them, of course, you would need to go with let. Then we go with a square bracket and then we assign to something. Now, why am I saying assign to something? Because, of course, if we're destructuring, we're looking for that array. So whether that is fruits or friends, since we already tested out fruits, why don't we look for the friends in this case? And then I can just simply come up with a name. And this is going to grab the first item. So, for example, if in here I go for John, then if I'll try to console log, you'll see that it will return this value. So essentially, since this is the first value in my destructuring, then this will access the first value in the array. And of course, I can just keep on adding, adding, adding by the end of the array. So here, let's log right away, John. And of course, you'll see that this is my value. So if I just keep on coming up with my variable names, for example, Peter, Bob, and then Anna, and then Kelly, you'll see that, of course, I can access all of them. If I console log the same way, so Peter, Bob, Anna, and then Kelly. And there it is. Now in my console, I have all the values in the array. So you probably have two questions. Well, what if I don't select, for example, the last value, the Kelly? What if I would omit that? Well, let's try it out. Now, in this case, of course, I would need to also remove it from my console log. And I can clearly see that nothing happened. So essentially, we just care about the values that we're accessing. So if I'm accessing the first value, then of course, I'm getting the first value. If I would like to get a second one, and in here, of course, I come up with some kind of variable, then I'm getting the second one. So if I omit one, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, you're probably also wondering what happens if I'm trying to access the value that is not in the array. For example, if we go back to Kelly scenario, and then we're looking for the Susan. So also I'll do that in my console log where I'm looking for Kelly and then Susan. And the answer is that this value will be undefined. So essentially, if you're trying to access a value from array and that a value is not there, as you see, we have only five items. We don't have that sixth item. Then this will just spit back undefined. And like I said, we can name this however we would like. So in this case, if I'll change this around and I'll say that my first value will be enemy, you also see that in my console log, if I console log enemy, of course, the value still be John. So you can come up with whatever the name you would want, and you'll be getting a value of the first item of the array. Now, the last question you probably have is, okay, well, what happens if I wouldn't want all the values in a row? What if I would only want John, then Bob, and then Kelly? Now, we already know with last values, we just don't request them, correct? 
So, for example, if I'm only looking for the first three, I don't have to type the four and the five. Essentially, nothing will happen like we had originally, where we had only three values over here. However, what does happen if those values are in between? For example, the second one, of course, would be between the first one and the third one. And the answer is we simply add a comma. So in this case, I'm still looking for my enemy. Of course, that is John. Then if I would want Peter, I just delete it and I just leave the comma. Now, of course, I also need to remove it from my console log because that doesn't make sense since the variable is not there. Then let's also omit Anna. Like so. And again, we just have to leave a comma. That's all we have to do. And in here also, let's remove Anna. Let's save it. And then you'll see that I'm successfully accessing John, Bob, Kelly, and then of course, undefined, since Susan is not there. But for example, if I wanted to skip Peter and Anna, I simply added the comma, and we are in good shape. And once we know how the structuring works, we can put it to good use when we would need to swap variables. So imagine the scenario we have variable one and variable second, one is Bob, second is John. And prior to array the structuring, we would need to come up with a temporary variable that would hold the value. Otherwise, of course, you would override that. So you would need to come up with temporary variable, then for example, store the value of the second one, and then assign the first one to the second one, and then first one to a temp one. And as a result, notice now first is John and the second one is Bob. However, we can do it much quicker using array destruction. So I will comment this out just so you don't think that I am cheating. And then in here, what I would want is to come up with my syntax. So my square brackets, but also keep in mind that, of course, we need to use let in this scenario. So if you'll try to use it with cons, of course, it is not going to work. And then in here, I'll set up right away my array where I'll say that, yeah, there's going to be a first and a second. So at the moment, I have Bob as a first, of course, here, and then John as a second. And what do we know about array destructuring? Well, that I could access the first one and the second one. However, what stops me from placing here the second one as a first one? So essentially, I have my first value, my Bob, but I'll just override the values. I'll say second is going to be over here. And the first one is actually going to be second. And as you can see, I'll have the same result where in my console log, I'll have first and second, and the values are John and Bob. Again, just to reiterate, array destructuring is a way of accessing and unpacking values from the arrays faster and easier. And syntax would be following where we come up with a keyword, then we have square brackets, and then we assign it to whatever array we would want to the structure. And then, of course, one by one, we can access values. If we're trying to access the value that is not in the array, we'll simply get back undefined. If we would want only the first item, then we just need to type out the first item. We can type however we would like, meaning the variable name is really up to you. But if I would want to hop over some items in the array, for example, if I would want to omit the second one, I just need to add a comma. 